G'day, I'm Greg and welcome to RevShed Performance. Today we're going to talk about making a poor man's flow bench using bits from the hardware store, pieces of cardstock, hammers and just the tools that you've got in your shed. Now I'm assuming that the reason you want to flow a test flow a cylinder head is because you want to make it flow more. You want to make it flow better. And so we'll talk about that a little bit, but I'm going to assume that you've got a die grinder of some description, um, that you've got a drill, an angle grinder, um, and a few drill bits. And that's about all you need. So this is an Australian 302 Cleveland head. It's cast iron. Uh, went out of production in the early part of the 80s, 83, I think they built the last one, although they were even available up into 84. Um, they might have built a few in 84. I really can't remember, to be honest with you. I really don't care because we can't get them anymore, even though it doesn't matter how good they are, we can't get them anymore. This head is basically the 351 2V, as they call it in America, 351 2V open chamber head with a re reduced combustion chamber. Same size intake, same size exhaust as the, what we used on the 351 here in Australia, uh, or the 2V in the US. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good head, but what I will do is we will show you how I made the template. So basically, where's my hammer? Trusty little ball pane hammer, piece of cardstock, line it up on the edge so you've got a reference point to come back to. What I probably should have done was I probably should have lined it up across the top edge as well, but I didn't. So you went to the edge, took the hammer, and then you just, using the round face, you just gently mark it. I generally start off with my bolt holes. Um, so I mark my bolt holes out. As you see, this bit of stock was a bit small, it's just out of uh, one of these books. And so it was a bit small and so I got a shape. Then what I did was I transferred that onto a hundred millimeter PVC flange. And you can see that what I've done is I've done that and I've worked out where center is. We had a drama a little while ago, so I'm actually reshooting this. The glue wasn't strong enough and it broke when it was hanging, when it was, um, the blower motor was hanging on it unsupported, but either way. So we've got that three extra, uh, some extra bolts in it to help it support the weight and I've re-glued it. But uh, that's how you make your bore adapter, which we'll put on the right way in a minute. There we go. So there's our bore adapter. And uh, the bore adapter is held on like this. So you can, these are 12 mil bolts, because 12 mil bolts are easy to get in Australia. But the original head bolts are half inch, and I would recommend, if you can, easy, half inch by four inch, or M12 by 100. Either one of those two will do you. In this case here, we're using M12 by 100s, because they were easy to get. At the store, okay, there's the last one. Now, 
out. Because this is glued together, I can't see where I am now, but when I did it the first time, I say when I did first um, first time I fitted it up, what I did was I actually marked it intake valve here, push that way, and what that does is that gives me my bore location, my centralised bore location. Now, 100 mil PVC pipe actually works out when you measure it's 103.3 millimetres, which is 4.07 something, 7.8 or 7.9, so it's nearly 80 thou over. But it doesn't matter. It's adequately close for what we are trying to do. And bearing in mind what we are using, um, yeah, it's more than good enough for what we need. Now, the exhaust adapter, the exhaust template, notice I marked them head face and out. And the reason being is that because this one's going up against the head face, I need to know which way my gas is going to go when I mark it out to cut it. Now, the other thing you have to be careful of on some of these is that they will have a, and this one had it, they have um, some stuff sticking up off the head face or off the face of the cat. And what you'll have to do is you'll have to give that a, um, a rub with the grinder just to delete it. And there was one deleted from here, one from here, and one from over there. So that it gets a flat face. Now, I've used 100mm wide gaffer tape to provide a gasket surface type surface for what I'm doing. And on the exhaust side here, what I have decided to do, or what I've done, is I've used socket head cap screws. And they don't have to go in very far because we're only holding on a piece of plastic. That now gives me my exhaust adapter. And on the intake, what I have done misplace a washer it doesn't matter I've taken a six inch cap and I've put the tape on the back of that to form my ceiling gasket uh, yes you really needed to see that didn't you and notice all everything's marked up or down you doesn't matter which one you do as long as you do it consistently And you know it's a bit, bit of green, as the Americans like to call it clay. In Australia, when, you, when I went to school, we called it plasticine. Uh, all right. Where did I put my spanner? There it is, over here. Normally, I'd already have this head laid down in the vice so that you can, uh, so that it will be ready for me to set up, but I'm doing it this way so you can see a little bit of what we got on. So the adapter, pressure test point, intake, exhaust. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause you and reposition everything, and then we will come back. Now, this is my valve positioner. And what it's made out of is two coupling nuts. 
a piece of 3 8 threaded rod, a 3 8 lock nut. I've taken this coupling nut, I threw it in the lathe, but you can just give it a rub on the, um, uh, on your, uh, with an angle grinder, because it needs to fit in here, and the 3 8 nut won't fit in there and turn, it just, it actually locks in nicely, it's the right size. This here is a 5 16th UNC by one inch bolt and I screw that in. Oh, actually, sorry, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I've done here. I missed a bit. What I've done here is I've got in here with the drill and I've drilled this to tapping size for a 3 8 thread and then I've tapped it halfway down 3 8 UNC. So it's 5 16th one end. 3 8 the other, and that's how I've done that. So you can do that freehand, just hold the nut and the vise, work out what halfway is on your nut, drill it down to halfway, tap it down. Now, make sure you've got a bottoming tap because you're going to want every thread you've got. You can get, and now what this lets me do is yes, I know it's still not perfectly straight. That's why we did. And then we can come down and put this in like that. And we've got an adequately rigid mounting point. Now, there's two washers here because this is my valve opener. And you notice that I have marked it at an angle because the valves are at an angle and uh, this is this is just a piece, piece of aluminium but that's because I had a piece of aluminium laying around so that two more washers I should have shown you my springs, but my springs are actually, I've got to, these are actually the ones off my old flow bench. I've had these for 40 odd years, 30 odd years, something like that. We'd be talking, ah, um, uh, Struth, back in the late 80s, I think I bought these springs. And so what that does now is I now have my valve opener. We're on the intake here. Right. Um, my intake flow adapter. Now I did omit to say one thing. Before you actually drill your um, adapters before you actually make them, work out where straight up is going to be and mark it again, mark it up and there you go. So now we have an intake adapter. This one here is my exhaust adapter. And this will make sense in a minute. This here is my flow device, an anometer used for measuring wind speeds and darts, for measuring airspeed out on the uh, on the boat. And what you have to, do, well, we'll talk about what you have to do, but. What happens is, hopefully you can see this when I put it on. We'll have to, I'll have to have a look. And so now what we're doing is we are measuring airflow in. Now again, I'm up. Can you see that? No. There. You can see that now. So this just slides on here like this. We now have up.
that is a blanking cap. So if I've got a tiny bit of leakage past an exhaust valve, when I'm doing intakes, it doesn't matter. This will reduce it to almost nothing. Incidentally, on here, see these lugs that I was talking about, how they're sticking up? They're the ones that I've ground off. There we go. So not perfectly airtight, but it's going to seal it well enough that the leakage that we get past that is going to be minimal. This here, this here is getting a bit carried away, but I'll, it's something that I already had. This is my 100 millimeter dial gauge, or four inch, and I'm in just exactly the wrong spot. We'll move this out another couple of inches. There we go. Cool. Turn that off. Position that. One of the beauties about using big gauges is that you can uh, generally get away with a bit. Alright. Move that over there. Cool. around so hopefully you can see what we've got there all right just pause this again. so we're doing intake testing so this is intake that's exhaust so we're set up there for intake we'll buy This across a bit. No airflow because we're ah. And this here is a digital manometer as opposed to an anometer. No neg negative pressure, positive pressure. And so what happens with this is this goes on here. And that will give us our test pressure in inches of water. I've got it set for inches of water. We can actually um, set it up for all sorts of things, but in this case, I want inches of water. We can do uh, use a manual gauge, which I might show later on, but I'm just set up for this at the moment. So, right, happy with that. Ah. Oh, we have to. Cool. All right. What we shall do? Off zero. First thing we will do. This has got no valve stem seals on it. So the first thing we'll do. This is set up to thousands of an inch because we're going to work in thousands of an inch. We're going to go to 600 there. And we'll do a calibration. Now, the calibration is going to be in video too because this one's already over. This one's probably 20 minutes already. 30 minutes is too long. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a calibration so we can get some meaningful numbers on it. And uh, yeah, that'll be in video too. Thanks for watching.